Hi, I'm Brian Preer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is balancing chemical equations. Occasionally in chemistry, your teacher will give you an unbalanced chemical equation, which, like an unbalanced diet, just isn't good for you. So, we're going to learn how to balance those things here. The first rule you need to remember is that the number of atoms of a specific type has to be the same on both sides of the equation. So, for instance, if you had six carbons on one side of the equation, six carbons on the other side. Fifteen billion oxygens on one side, fifteen billion oxygens on the other. So, let's just move on, and I will teach you the four easy steps to balancing a chemical equation. There are harder ways to do it. Don't do them. First, place a one by the most complex compound. This is pretty easy to judge. There's usually something like Br2CO4 sitting around. That's your complex compound. Put a 1 by it. Next, balance anything not an element. You know what an element is. Anything just by itself, like lithium by itself, or O2, since it's diatomic. After that, balance the elements. And the fourth step doesn't always come into play, but you need to multiply by the lowest common multiple. What this does is it gets rid of the fractions that might occur. If they don't, don't worry about it. So let's move on to some examples. Let's say we've got C3H8, and this is combining with oxygen to form water and carbon dioxide. Pretty standard equation. But it's unbalanced. We've got one, two, three oxygens over here, but only two over here. So let's get going. Rule 1. 1 by the most complex compound. That's our C3H8 over here. So, there's our 1. Moving on. Anything that is not an element. Well, oxygen is an element, so we're not going to worry about that. That leaves us with carbon and hydrogen. So let's start with carbon. Well, this number is multiplied by these small subscript numbers to tell you how many of that particular atom you have. 1 times 3 is 3. So you have 3 carbons on this side. Over here, you've only got 1. So, 3 times 1 is 3. So we put a 3 over here by carbon dioxide. So now we have 3 carbons on this side, too. Great. Carbons are balanced. Let's move on to hydrogen. Well, 1 times 8 is 8, so we have 8 hydrogens on this side. Over here, the only hydrogens we can find are in water. And we've only got 2. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. So we can put a 4 in front of water, so we have 8 hydrogens here, too. Hydrogens are balanced. Everything non-elemental is balanced. So we move on to element. That's oxygen. There are 4 times 1 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6, for a total of 10 oxygens on this side. Well, we've only got 2 over here, but we know that 5 times 2 is 10, so we can just put a 5 there. 10 oxygens on this side. Everything's balanced. Balanced chemical equation. Okay, so let's move on to something a little more tricky. Let's say you've got NH3, and it's going to combine with some oxygen. I like oxygen. And what it'll make is some NO and some water. Okay, one by the most complex compound, NH3. Now we balance the things that are elements. O2 is, again, an element, so we don't worry about that for now. We can balance either nitrogen or hydrogen. So let's just start with nitrogen. On this side, we have one nitrogen. One times one is one. Over here, well, in order to keep nitrogen's constant, we just put a one over there. So we've got one nitrogen here as well. Great, that was easy. Hydrogen's next. One times three is three. We have three hydrogens on this side. Over here, we've got two. Well, that's a problem, because you can't exactly change these subscript numbers. So we need to figure out two times what is going to be three. Well, with some simple algebra, we realize that that's 3 over 2. So you might be going, whoa, fractions. Yes, you can put them in for now. 3 over 2 waters. That's not actually going to occur in nature. We'll fix it later. So now we have a total of 3 hydrogens over here, balanced. And that leaves us with oxygen again. Well, 1 times 1 is 1 oxygen, and 3 halves times 1 is... 3 halves, 
So 1 plus 3 halves gives you 5 halves. 5 over 2 oxygens on this side. Interesting. So now we need 5 halves of oxygen on this side. Well, what times 2 is 5 halves? Again, some simple algebra, and we realize that we need 5 fourths. So we just write that in. 5 fourths, O2. And now, everything's balanced. We have 1 nitrogen, 3 hydrogens, and 5 halves of oxygen on both sides. But I doubt that you've ever seen half of an oxygen atom in nature. That's where step 4 comes into play. Get rid of the denominators. The one thing that will cancel them all out is multiplying by 4. So, doing that, 4 times 1 is 4. So 4 NH3, 4 times 5 over 4 is 5, 502. Again, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 NO. And 4 times 3 over 2 is 6, 6 H2O. If we check it all out, 4 nitrogens on this side, 12 hydrogens, and 6 plus 4, 10 oxygens. Over here, 4 nitrogens, 3 times 4, 12 hydrogens, and 10 oxygens. We are completely balanced, that's it. To recap, make sure the number of atoms of the same type is the same on both sides. Use the four easy steps to balance your chemical equation. One by the most complex compound, balance non-elements, balance elements, multiply by the LCM to get rid of fractions. Again, I'm Brian Preer, that's all for now, see you next time.